and $150,000 of recovered engineering <coughs> fees. So in order to not have our fees and permit line on the cap or have a huge variance, we'd like to recognize this budget adjustment so that it will be in line with what we've actually seen come in so far. The last one was um, the anticipation that also had to do with Evergreen Road. At the time that the budget was developed, we were not sure that we were going to be successful or not on the road millage. So in order to make sure that there was an ample amount of money available for the Evergreen Road project, in case we did not get the millage, the budget included a $3 million, $3,507,116 um, transfer from the LERF fund. Subsequent, of course, we were successful in getting our millage. We have now bonded in late April or early May and received 47 million of the, or 41 million of the first of the 99 <coughs> projects. So in, other, in, in order to correct that, I want to change the transfer from LERF and you know get rid of that and actually show it as a transfer from the bond proceeds, which is showing up in the route road bond construction fund. And I believe these three actions will assist us in um, showing a, a better. I, I probably will be coming subsequent. We have done <coughs> in the past with some, some minor things, but these were the major things that I saw. I still have some questions about a um, couple of departments and, and where they're going to land at the end of the year. But for the most part, I've gone through the major funds, and everybody seems to be within range that they should be. A couple of them I might need to talk to the administration about. Revenues are pretty pretty steady and. Um, there's usually a year, I mean, a year, a month or two lag in the revenues. So when you look at these reports, you, it's supposed to be like 83 percent of the year. You may see like the state shared revenues and general funds only at 65. Well, we don't receive the last payment until August, so that will not be recorded until we do our accruals. So what you'll be doing is getting an updated May for all the funds, and then Fred has asked for at least towards the end of July a preliminary June just to show where we're at, where, where we are at and that I can actually at that point tell what I'm still waiting for and that I know I'm going to receive in August so I can footnote all of that so that we'll know exactly kind of where we're going to be and it'll be much more transparent to you when you uh, you won't be receiving like a cap right at the end of the year and saying this is the first time we've seen any of the results. So basically what I'm asking today is for you to um, receive and file this. Um, and I would ask that if you would um, amend your agenda for the 7 o'clock meeting and add to the budget adjustment and approve the budget adjustment. With the, uh, the first item, uh, what, what happened with the DTE match? I mean, is there any, is that there was, any you know, it, quite frankly, that was with, uh, this was with Bob Northrup who was has been gone for several years, and for some reason it was this, this whole thing. The DDA was going <laughs> to kick in money. DTE, sorry, DTE was going to kick in money, and we were going to kick in Metro Act money. The DTE, they could never nail them down, and then the DDA started to not have as much money available because their tip went away, so it, it just kind mm -hmm. of evaporated, and, it, and, and the project, I mean, never went forward. And you plan to revisit the project? Well, again, that would be a public works. Thing. I don't. I mean, that's not something I just deal with the money. And if if, if we get like a two hundred thirty nine thousand, two hundred thirty thousand dollars, we certainly could revisit that if there's money available in that. But again, right now we're using that for roads. But yes, I understand what you're saying. It would be nice. It would be an amenity that we could sort of. <coughs> so I, I would think that what we would do is refer that to the administrator for further, um, if that's okay with council. Well, the uh, the last year with the street. We've got a solid plan in streets, as well as our uh, <coughs> sanitary sewer. The next two areas in the public works arena that we're going to focus on are storm and street lighting. And I can tell you, the street lighting, uh, we've got everything mapped out, who owns what, but you've got a, a lot of existing street lights that are older that could probably be replaced with LED. We're trying to figure out how that funding is going to work. Let me also make comment on the uh, Metro Act fund. I'm actually looking for an entity to audit the fund. Uh, I, the amount of fiber in here, when you read the act, it, I believe Southfield should be getting more money. And my staff person who works with that very closely is in agreement and, and, and is here tonight. Uh, when we did the audit of the cable, we saw the difference that that meant 
another 60 some thousand came from AT&T. So there are a couple things Metro Act. We've been getting this money, putting it in. Jim, what's the fund balance in there? You Probably close. To, well, after this transfer, it's going to be down to at least like 900000 something like that. And so it's been building up just very slowly. But when you look at the amount of fiber in our right right away, the math doesn't quite add up. So there's going to be a challenge. Actually, I spoke to our lobbyist a few weeks ago. Um, I've been looking for someone to, to audit this. But the street lighting you know, is, is a larger issue because we've got some of the older lights on uh, Telegraph, you know, uh, some we own, uh, some <coughs> center, the green ones uh, are, are own. But there's no doubt we'd like to do more street lighting in, in certain parts of the city. Um, and I think the DEA is one of those areas. And as we go through the redevelopment of that area, I think street lighting needs to be stepped up. There are a lot of communities that are moving street lighting to 100% special assessment uh, as a way to offset the cost. Um, so in the next year, stormwater street lighting, just a segue on street lighting on stormwater, a FEMA grant uh, as part of the uh, flood we had last year was submitted for 1.7 million for sections 24 and 25. That covers, our, our engineers are telling us that that should address about 80% of the stormwater issue. So in the next year, you're going to hear a lot of discussion about stormwater. Uh, part of it, I probably mentioned to some of you, with LTU, we're in a discussion about creating a center for stormwater excellence. Uh, the stormwater is getting very interesting. The city of Detroit is actually charging all of the commercial businesses for parking lot and non-areas. i got to tell you, I don't know where they're getting the statutory authority to do that. <coughs> because when Dearborn was tried doing that a few years ago, they they got slapped uh, by the courts and said you, you couldn't do it. DSW is doing things like giving credit to uh, their customers by, for reducing the amount of sewer, uh, uh, of stormwater going into the system. So. Look for street lighting and stormwater. Uh, they're, they're on our agenda, and we've started on the street lighting. Some of the foot lighting. There's two things happening in street lighting. There's two different consortiums that have been proposed. The Michigan Public Service Commission is proposing to raise the rates for different types of street lighting, to which, in essence, what some folks are saying reduces the market. Place uh, competitive advantage that LED lights have had. So there are some things that I think that by the end of the year you'll see a couple items move forward. I think stormwater is going to move a little quicker because the Oakland County Water Resource Commission is setting up a committee to <coughs> review their standards. Their standards have not been reviewed in a number of years, and a lot of us in this room think that. The standards um, handicap older, personally suburban communities, and there is a willingness on the county uh, water resource commission to maybe let some of those stormwater uh, issues. So probably more of a response than you wanted, but those are two items that are on our work plan. Yeah, the million dollars was that just a fund, or was that earmarked for? A Specific. We actually had it. It's a line. It was one of our funding sources for Evergreen Road from what was originally presented to council, and we had always said we're going to take some of this money out of the Metro Act. Money. Yeah, that part was. That it was. I just don't know how they missed it or we missed. It, I should say that when when I went through the capper before. I mean, not the capper, but for the budget submission. I, I don't totally look at support services because that mm -hmm. is sort of like the omnibus where everything falls in and they don't have a lot of control over that. So it was clearly budgeted on, it was clearly budgeted and it has always been as part of Mr. Charette's um, breakdown of all the funds that he wanted to go towards Evergreen Hills, I mean Evergreen Hills, Evergreen Road. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was always, it, the, the, the key thing was is we had that money, we were saving it and it had been, had been projects, like we said, had been 
given up a long time ago. So it was like, okay, I keep stockpiling this money. So we've been using it actually. I think we used it last year because there's really not going to be about more than 140,000 left after this million. But that really was earmarked. We originally, the understanding was it could only be like, because we were very narrow-minded on what you could use it for. Mm -hmm. Then we talked to the state, and the state said, no, 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 it can be used for anything in the road. It, you, it, it's right-of-way money, but you can use it as long as you're, cr you know, correcting the road. So that kind of opened it up to, okay, well, we can, because before it was simply we were buying cherry pickers that were going to be cutting and trimming the trees in the right of way. We used it to buy the, replace the Dutch elms that died. Um, everything that was in truly just the right of way, and then it sort of opened up a couple years, yeah, about, it was only about two or three years ago, where they said, no, your definition is too stringent, you can open that up wider. And so now we've been using it for, for that road purpose. Okay, so the million dollars... It was just a clerical error? No. Okay. That, that, that my question is, the million dollars is just a fund. At it's this just point. a dozen. You know at the end of the year we have all those restrictions, and I show you this is for the equalization reserve, this is for, it's one of those, but it's truly restricted for the right-of-way purposes only. In other words, our designations, if you look at our, our report, our designations are restricted, uh, but they're just sort of restricted by you. This has a legal restriction, so it really <coughs> is called in the CAPR restricted. Okay. So if you were looking Maybe if I keep asking the question okay. in a different way. <laughs> I doubt well, it, but okay. <laughs> you'll understand what I'm trying to get at. It is all the, in the, the general million, fund. The million dollars <laughs> was not designated for a specific no. project. It's more, uh, it's restricted for a certain thing, but it's as it is right now, it's a fund. The reason I was asking that question is, if, for instance, the majority of it was designated to fix the streetlights down in the DDA area, we would have to yeah. rescind that no, no, no. project. And and uh, if you want to use it for something else, right. it, was never, that project. it was never physically earmarked okay. <coughs> for a for project, nor was it ever budgeted. Okay. It did appear not had nothing to do with streetlights. The, the, when we were presented the Evergreen Road project. One of our sources was a million dollars coming out of the Metro Act. And I want to say that was presented to Council yeah. December of 13 or something. Yeah, around that. Around the time we were talking about how much money was left and where and how much are we going to have left to do this. So, I, again, uh, to make it clear, you're right. The, the purpose of me segregating it was because. Unfortunately, people tell me and say, well, we've got this project we'd like to do, so why don't we hold this money? But again, the project never got to, your, okay. to the point that it would be to you to, to say, yes, we want this project. Okay. It was something that they said, well, this is something we'd like to do, so let's see if we can stockpile money to get, to get it up. So okay. that's what I did. And then when he went away, I'm like, well, then I know the project's gone because no one else has even known it, knows about it. And so um, it really is, it's earmarked for right-of-way purposes. Had you, you're right, had you created a project, then I would have I would have come back to you and said, we're putting this project on hold, we need to transfer the money, but that never happened. Okay, great, thanks. What's the total amount budgeted for? Well, <laughs> it depends. Where are we at in terms of the use of Well, not a lot in major streets, because a lot of it is being, from our side of it, is going to be the water. I'm really not the person that's keeping track of that. We have I have a meeting with them that is coming up because I need to know how much I have to transfer. I have not been able to have that meeting yet with Lee and the uh, other people involved. So I don't really <coughs> have a dollar amount for you. I can certainly get one to you. But it's really, it, most of it has been on the water side and of course it's, it's flowing through the state. Those bills come slow. So uh, we're still kind of waiting. I would like to know exactly what the budget is. How much is it going to be? How much is it going to be? Certainly can provide that. Okay, anything else, Council? Yeah, I do. Um, on the uh, the recovered permit fees, mm -hmm. uh, are we caught up with that yet, or are we still We're still working our way through, but we're in the final. We're, 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 we're still seeing years. some come through, but it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a going to be a large amount coming in for the rest of the, the time is from, from what I've been told. Now are most of the ones that were recovered uh, uh, contractors that said, you know, or you can't find a contractor or... Um, well, if we you can't find people, that money goes to, that the state. Goes to the state. So basically if you got your C of O, even if it was 20 years ago, 
we sent out letters, we sent out the check. If it comes back, we send it back to the building to try to do some more due diligence to find them. <laughs> and then um, if, it can, if we cannot find them, we issued it to the state under the name of the original person that pulled the permit. If they did not get their CFO, if they did nothing, that is when we take the money. So yeah. Okay. So, so if they did not get a CFO, okay. Correct. So if they didn't file through those the people, the fees here, <laughs> what, what we rewrote the ordinance, basically what we earned for administering the, uh, the, the, uh, the service of help getting people through the process. But the, the balk, uh, Mr. Pierce, this was originally about six million. Three, three point four. Three, four million. A big chunk of this has been returned to the original uh, customer, mm -hmm. and a big chunk has gone to the state with those numbers that council is proud Okay. Yeah, there was only four million total, and, and some of those deposits are not. So it's about three, three million. Okay. Can I just comment on the uh, the alert? Keep in mind. The 2005 transportation bond, uh, that was refinanced after last year's budget, so you no longer need that large loan. Um, no. Am I saying that wrong? Yes. I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> but we there is a 3.9. You, you, when we refinanced yeah. the road bond, <laughs> that brought in another 3.9 million that we didn't have when we prepared last year's budget. You received four, almost $4 million dollars more in proceeds because what you did is you had a 15-year bond. We had spent five, or we paid down five years of it. And when we refinanced it, we refinanced the 10 that we still had left, but then we put it out for another five years. So you collected another $4 million dollars of bond proceeds. There is, however, because of the deficit situation that major streets were in, in probably almost seven or eight, ten years ago, there is still alert obligation that, that what Major Street does pay back to LERF on an annual basis. So that did not go away. But there is additional money that are bond proceeds that will be spent this year, the next fiscal, I should say. <laughs> or if I can find that they, they fall within the programs of this year's, of, of what the bond proceeds are for. Because there's projects in each bond um, official statement, it'll tell you what projects are available to use this money on. So if, we, if I find that there's money to be used, I can transfer it via this transfer that we're doing today to the major streets, which will allow them to have more money. It's all goes to major street, but it's just kind of an accounting thing that the bond proceeds have to show up on the bond proceeds account and be transferred in as they use them because of the fact that it's not only major, but it's local. So I can't just say all this money is major streets because it's not. It depends on what programs we're doing. So it's going to be in one fund, then I will transfer it at the end of the year after I go through all the money and say, okay, here's how much that major streets spent this year. This is how much local streets spent this year. <coughs> and then it'll, the next year will be the same thing. But it, by the time we get to, since, since it just happened and we just got the bond proceeds, that's kind of why I don't have all the numbers. By the time July comes, <coughs> I should have by the first or second week of July all of that pulled together. And so I'll tell you how much is going to be expended, how much they've encumbered, how much will be left. And then there'll, there'll be, we still have another couple of series of bonds after we do this because we only did half of the bond money right now. So we'll be going out in another two or three years once they spend the 40. I do have some questions. Uh, when we borrow money, do we pay our self-interest? From LERF? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. For the most part, yeah. So you, it, it, in the past, you always did. It was always 6%. Then we moved it to 3%. Then there started to be this kind of slippery slope we got on where there were transfers and we didn't even borrow the money. We just gave it back. We just gave it away, which we've done. So we've been doing that. Um, but for the most part, if you want to go historically, for most of the money that's in the, the LERF, there always is at least a 3% now uh, okay. interest. That's how, that's, how the LERF, that's actually how the LERF has grown so much. Because it was 6%. All the spe every special assessment we ever did, the, the, the citizens didn't pay it up front. We gave them 10 years. We paid all the costs. We charged them the 6%. All of the LDFA loans were always 6%. The TIFA loans. Anybody that got loans were 6%. Actually, I'm probably going to come back to you in the fourth quarter and ask if we can. The only people that are paying 6% right now is the Parks and Rec. And quite frankly, they could use the help of the little alleviation of at least being reduced to 3%. <laughs> So that would be the only ones right now they have a loan for both um, the golf course and for, I think, for the delay. 
And so those two would be given to, I mean, right now, that I think are still at 6%, except for old special assessments. Okay. I wonder how, if if we went on a slippery slope, and so we weren't following our own rules, I wonder if there's a something official that we ought to do with to the council so that we make sure that we are, are fair to ourselves so that uh, we pay ourselves interest. Uh, I, I can tell you right now, Parks and Rec is on the golf course work done years ago. It has two more payments, and you're paying 3% interest in the LURP. And it made when, I, uh, when Mr. Pierce and I did the research on the history of the LURP, it goes back to 1983, and it's primarily money the city loaned it. And keep in mind, some of that period, interest rates were double digits. Because I don't think it was always 6%. I think there might have been uh, a point where it was much higher. So, yeah. so may I answer just, Mr. Pierce, so I'm clear. So no LERP money is going into roads. That's no LERP money currently is being transferred. That, into and I want council project. to hear that for for a reason. And originally, when we did the Evergreen Road as a hedge, as a hedge, we budget because they wanted to make sure that if the if the the millage failed, we had <coughs> enough money to cover all of our expenditures. So the assumption was that we were going to do a transfer from LERP. And then my other question is: so the 2005 bond money that we yeah, yeah, re not committed all of that. I mean, is it not that I'm aware of? That's the so part the I get. Forty-three have million that came in from the first bond piece plus that other. Currently, four, right now, the only thing that I've nine. paid out of those bond proceeds is okay. bond issuance costs. Right. That is the only so I just I wanted council to hear. I have not charged. We're not so they've had enough money. Or right now, most both funds have enough money to cover their expenditures to date. The problem is, is one, there is a lag between how the state bills. So we're going to get those now coming up, I'm pretty sure. So we're going to see the rush on the bills coming in. Plus, um, Ms. Roberts and I have been, you know, very diligently talking about we need to cut close earlier, and so we need departments to get their bills to us earlier so that I can close earlier. So we're going to be sending out a push pretty soon on that to say, you know, you need to tell your vendors to get your bills here because I can't be holding these books open till October because you don't feel like billing. <laughs> So we should be, like I say, by the time July comes around, I should be in a good position to know what they've got, what they they can expect, because of course I will talk to the department and ask them and what do you count, expect. So we first need to spend that 05 money first, then the, the part of the bond we issued earlier. And we've got certain well, it, it, and timing. They both have, um, you, I mean, usually you, you, you never have to worry about arbitrage before three years. So. Um, so basically, the issue is, though, I have to make sure, and this is my problem, this is what I'm going to resolve with Lee and them, is that I have to make sure I know what projects have been put in the OS for the 2005, which projects are in the new one, and if they've spent stuff on that project, then I certainly can transfer that money. If they didn't do any work on that project or somehow haven't set, <coughs> let that contract, then the money will still be there until no, next year until they get the project out. But we will have it spent before three years. Before the I'm sure all of you are familiar with. You get 40 requests to your departments all the time. In January of this year, uh, they came out with Public Act 563. Basically, what happens now is that nothing has changed as far as you know FOIA, the information that you review, what can be disclosed, what cannot be disclosed. However, the legislature decided now that they want us to have uh, four. Uh, that the public will be able to receive when they um, turn in FOIA requests. So, for example, we have the written public summary of FOIA procedures and guidelines. This is basically explaining the FOIA process, uh, the things that we've already done very well here in the city of Southfield, South excuse me, the time limits um, and the things that we are already familiar with. 
The only difference now is that if I come in and I said, you know, I want to make a FOIA request for uh, all the violations for tall grass, when I submit that, um, you are going to give me a copy. You in the city of Southville, coming to the city of Southville, will give me a copy of this written public summary of the FOIA procedures and guidelines. There's also a more detailed one uh, that someone can also receive. This just goes into more details again, explaining uh, the procedures, uh, the time limits, the positive requirements, your avenues for appeal. Finally, because we do charge <laughs> when we do this, um, we have to have also in place an itemization uh, form that shows the fees and how we're charging them. So again, it's the same thing we're always we've always done. It's just that it has to be on this form, and we have to provide this form to the requester. Uh, also, one of the things is if we have the internet present, we have to have these accessible on the internet. So if we do not have these forms available <coughs> and on the internet as of July 1st, we cannot charge for FOIA requests. So that's pretty much in a nutshell of what we had to do by July 1st. We just have to have these documents, the um, itemization form showing how we're charging, which is what we've always done, and shows the positive requirements and things like that. Um, this is a more detailed um, document of the procedures and guidelines, and then the written public summary that explains to someone who says, you know, I'm not going to go look this up. Can you just tell me what I need to do? And this is uh, what's included. Um, so uh, the legislature said we must have this in place by July 1st that we cannot collect for your uh, fee. So that is what we're presenting tonight. But again, uh, nothing major has changed as far as once we start the procedure and how we review it, it really comes down to showing what we're charging, um, how much time we spend, we have to show that now in these forms. Council, any questions? Yeah, uh, one of the things in there says that if uh, someone sends an uh, email request and it happens to go into the spam with the junk mail, that uh, the the uh, FOIA uh, manager only uh, only looks in the has to look into them at least once a month. Correct. Why? Uh, you know that's our problem. I mean, we set the filters for what we accept, and if we set the filters so tight that it bounces or it goes into the junk or the, the spam doesn't bounce, if it bounces, then the person that sent it in knows that it didn't go in. But if it doesn't come back to the to the person that sent it in, they expect that it was received, but it's in spam and junk. Why are, why are we waiting a whole month before we uh, interrogate the the spam? and the junk filters, or the, the data. Actually, that's discretionary at this point, and we'll probably discuss it more. I think that's what they just said today. You know, if it's coming into spam, again, as a, a government entity, we're doing other things, so they didn't want to say, hey, if it comes to spam, you know, we're going to get to it right away. I think they still want to say, you know, we're functioning as your government. We're doing uh, our duty as your government agency. But at the same time, you know, when FOIA requests come in, it's not something, especially if it goes into spam, then we're going to check and then you've got to come back and say, hey, you didn't respond fast enough. I think the legislature was trying to give uh, the municipalities, I should say, the benefit of the doubt that um, we will serve the public, but at the same time, we can't, you know, take away someone and say, hey, you better go check the spam folder uh, more frequently. Why not? Yeah. Why not? If I can just add to that, first of all, FOIA is coming to our office, mm -hmm. and we have not experienced any problems going to the spam. For the most part, they always get either my email or um, the deputy's email. I do check my spam every day <coughs> or every other day, and um, I have never had a FOIA in there. So okay. A lot of these FOIAs are um, the, the repeat people. I mean, for the most part, a lot of our requests are predominantly all building, and I think once building put things online, it will be a lot easier. Um, unfortunately, this, there were some municipalities that were abusing the process, 
here in the city of Southville that can do the fantastic. Um, we address FOIAs in a timely manner and do an excellent job. Unfortunately, with this new ruling, though, departments have to be aware, Mr. Warren, this is where I hope we're going to have training. They're going to have to start putting in the numbers for their time. You know, the formula for how much to charge has become more complicated. And while we're just the paper shufflers, you know, I can't just assume, <coughs> you know, someone's wages, et cetera, et cetera, is, is what it is. So HR is going to probably have to put a scale online just to make it easy for everyone so it's like a one-stop shop where we can all just yeah. go. Yeah, because it says that it's the, the uh, least expensive person that's capable of, of <coughs> doing the FOIA interrogation regardless of who does it. Right, but it also includes benefits and everything like that. Right. And, and I can't determine that. That's from HR. So they, the, they have recommended that something be put online so every individual person who may be responding can go online, figure <coughs> out what their benefit calculation is, fill in this four-page sheet, which, by the way, we're not going to have to, have to comply with it. And it's just it's a lot more complicated. Dawn's done a great job trying to simplify it, but at least we understand mm -hmm. it. But it's, it's got to be everyone in the city, because we're just only one department. Sure. Uh, it seems to me it would be that the easiest thing to do is for each department to take the well, this is going to be a general statement. Take the, the least expensive person and calculate <coughs> their benefits, and it would be one number. So that if it's, you know, if they get paid, you know, $14 an hour plus benefits, it might be $16 an hour, and just put $16 on the, you know, for the, as one number, rather than say uh, $14 plus you know, two dollars for benefit because that makes it a lot more complicated. Well, but sometimes there's different scenarios where <coughs> the lowest paid person of that department cannot perform that duty, mm -hmm. and it has to be the more expensive person. So mm -hmm. it just depends on the request. Um, there's a lot of different variables when it comes to a FOIA. Yeah. That's what went through my mind when I said <laughs> I stopped and said it's going to be a general. Yeah, yeah. We wish it could be that easy. The other, the other question that I had was for someone that doesn't have a computer or is not computer literate, uh, one of the, what it says in here is, if somebody calls in, you can say, you say to them, I'm going to refer you to this, you know, our our website, and you can find it on our website. Um, but if a, if a, let's say a, a senior, a real senior, uh, has no computer or is not computer literate, it, it seems to me like just telling them it's on our website and you can get it for free is not very helpful. Well, there is, if someone like, wants to come in, they can get the form, they can get everything if they come in also. So if they don't have access to a computer, we still are required to keep everything in paper form. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, the, at the city clerk's office, I'm assuming that's where we're going to make a central location for the form. So if they don't have access to a computer, then we still have to provide those forms to them in paper. So okay. We presently do. We okay. presently do that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, How many people in the city in general are, I guess, capable of handling FOIA requests? Is it mostly through the, through the clerk's office, or does each department have a specified person? Well, I mean, years, of, years ago, council designated the city clerk as a FOIA coordinator. So the FOIAs come into the city clerk's office, whether it be via fax, via email, via the um, And then we basically are the paper shufflers. So according to the law, we have five days to send a letter out to, and I'm just saying, the building department. And they have five days <coughs> to respond back to us. If we don't get a letter by the fifth day, um, then we can ask for a 10-day extension. Every department in the city can receive a FOIA or a request, and sometimes there's multiple departments that we take. But is that your question? So each, I guess, in more detail, each department has someone who's assigned to handle the FOIA request? Um, kind, kind of, sort of, yes, but it just, um, again, <coughs> depends if it's, the building department for bonds, we may go to the bond person where there might be 
might be another situation we need to talk to the actual building director or the bond person's not going to deal with the sign. Yeah. So, and sorry, I'm picking on the building department, but, you know, so it just depends on the situation where it goes, and it could be anyone. Yeah, it depends on the request and what they're looking for. Yeah, what, what basically what they're looking for. I just, just want to comment. The uh, building department is probably the number one entity for FOIAs. And it's usually anyone involved in the real estate transaction doing their due diligence and such. One of the things we've talked about uh, within the building department is if we could somehow move more of our records to a digital system and then allow and train the development community how to access that from a remote location. It's primarily the environment, you know, Environmental consultants, the phase one, two grand, you know, part of the fee, but it consumes a lot of time and, and resources. And we understand that we've got to be doing these things out in the open and in the sunshine, but it is an expense that, even with the cost recovery, doesn't begin to recuperate the true cost on the organization. The other thing, the other type of FOIA is when people are on these fishing expeditions. And those are the ones where they cast these huge nets. For our police department, the amount of things that have to be redacted, and it, is, it is a major effort. Um, but I think some point in the next year, if we could move the building department and planning and engineering, I think we could knock off a huge amount of, of the FOIAs and, and the clerical support necessary. And perhaps even move that to where people are online and they're paying to review it or something. Now we're going to look, we're looking at options. <coughs> the first thing is getting our, our records into a digital format that can be and such. We still have a lot of fish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Where's the, where, does, where does the recovery, cost recovery go? So which department does it go back to whoever did the work or is there a fund where we put it all in one space? It's or just less fun to get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe it shows, it shows up as a line item revenue in the clerk's office. <laughs> It's not a super, for the amount of work we do, it's not a big oh, line item. Which I could say it paid 100% for a person. Yeah. yeah. It's only cost recovery, isn't it? We don't make revenue. No. It's only cost recovery. Right. We don't make, we can't make profit. No, we, we don't. Yeah. 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 Yeah.